they have been around for over 20 years. Lord of all creation, the water, earth, and sky. With hit songs like Agnes Day and God of Wonders, to name a few, Third Day has been known as the quintessential Christian rock band. Now releasing their most recent album, Lead Us Back, their third worship album, I got to sit down with frontman Mac Powell recently in Toronto as he shared what it's like to be in a band for 20 years, how they choose the songs that have made Third Day the success they've become over the years, and advice he gives to the next generation of Christian rock bands. So Mac, 22 years, congratulations, Third Day's been around forever, kind of seen as the quintessential Christian rock band. How have you guys done it? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just along for the ride. Uh, I remember, I tell this story sometimes in concert that uh, we had been together four or five years when our first album came out in 96. Yeah. And so it was a four or five year overnight success. And when our first album was coming out, the classic Christian rock band Petra was celebrating 20 years of being a band. Yes. I remember praying and going, Lord, please do not let us be a band for well, 20 years. Well, this is what That's I heard. Crazy. Yes, you yeah. were praying that God would not allow well, 20 years to go it's by. It's kind of a half joke, <laughs> but it just seems like when you're a kid, when you're 20 something years old and you hear that a band's, you know, that's how old you are. Yeah. And then you hear of a band that's been around as long as your, your age. It just seems like that's forever, that's your life. So I thought, man, there's no way I want to be in a band for my whole life, that's crazy. Then soon I realized, wait a second, 20 years goes by quickly. The universe declares your majesty. Come on. Who you are, Lord, you are. The Lord of heaven and earth. How do you stay relevant? for 22 years. Um, I mean, you know, things change, people change. Yeah, I think for that? us, the reason we stayed, or how we stayed relevant, I think, is that we were never on some sort of musical bandwagon. We were yeah. always just a very classic rock kind of band. And so, um, even though people will debate whether rock and roll is dead or not, it, if, if it is dead, it, it comes back to life a lot. Mm -hmm. And so for us, we've never tried to trace any, chase any kind of trends. We've just tried to be, a straight up American rock band uh, with different influences, you know, throughout the years. And so I think that's why we're, we're not trying to be somebody that we're not. We're not trying to be, the, we've never tried to be the cool hip band. We can't be that. Yeah. And so just playing our music, I think, um, you know, it's a classic kind of sound. And so I think that's why we've remained around for a while. You talk about the sound. There is a third day sound. There is. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to describe it, but yeah. there is a sound that you just know when you're hearing a song, yeah. it's a third day song. So when you're writing songs, how, how do, you know, I'm assuming there are a lot of songs that you write, a lot of songs that are probably given to you. How do you weed it out and kind of find those songs that you know are going to be a yeah. third day song? Um, I, that's a great question. I think for us, it's um, songs come in seasons. Yeah. And so, um, you know, we've we write mostly our own songs, but whenever we feel like we hear a song that we really love, whether it's a friend wrote that song, or it's a song that we uh, that influenced us many, many years ago, whatever the case be, there's been great examples of that in our in our history. It's, there's just something in your heart. There's something mm -hmm. in your ears when you hear it, but you hear it even more in your heart that, hey, let's try this. And we've been fortunate that some songs that we didn't write uh, turned out to be big hits. Uh, Agnes Day by Michael yeah. W. Smith. You know, that was something that we played together at camps as we, when we first got together, we would play for youth groups and things like that. So it just kind of remained in the catalog. Mm. And then uh, a great song came along that we were never supposed to record called God of Wonders. Yep. And um, you're talking it, about songs that were like pivotal to my salvation <laughs> in my life. So I'm like, yes. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. So there's been these handful of songs that came along that it, they were just too, there was something about it, those songs um, that we couldn't say no to. It yeah. just felt right. And so fortunately, because it felt right to us, uh, it felt right to our fans as well. So I've been doing a lot of research on you and haven't really found the story of how you guys started. So okay. how, how did Third Day start? Uh, Mark Lee, who plays guitar, yeah. and myself, we went to high school together. And we knew each other. I moved around a lot when I was a kid. So, so I went to three high schools in four years. Wow. So my final destination in high school, I was there for two years, my junior and senior year. And um, 
we started playing music together in the marching band. Wow. And that's how we became friends. And huh. then pretty soon he heard me sing at uh, an assembly at school. And so he said, hey, will you come sing for my garage band I'm in with a bunch of other guys? And I said, sure. And so uh, we did that for a little while, for a few months. And then finally, both of us just really started. We were, uh, you know, your last year of high school, you about to graduate. Mm -hmm. And you start asking those questions about, oh, man, what am I going to really do uh, with life now? And so both of us in asking ourselves those questions kind of brought us back to God mm. and, and into the Bible and started looking for direction. And from that excitement about our faith, that carried over to us wanting to do that in our music and it became Third Day. And I think that's a part of the secret of Third Day is that you guys have stayed together. Yeah, it's, it's probably one of the things that we're most proud of through the years yeah. is, uh, is being a band for so long that, that we feel like, we hope that even though, you know, our success may go up and down with the times, uh, we've made music for our fans that they've continued to love and, and hopefully has encouraged them. It's encouraged us. Now, this is your third worship album. It took 12 years uh -huh. to, to put this out. Why 12 years? Why did it take so long? Um, I don't know, really. I think for me, uh, some of the guys in the band, it just took us so we were at, at different places in life and different kind of thoughts of what the band should do and so I've wanted to do a worship album for a few years now but it just for different reasons never worked out whether we just weren't on the same page within the band or we would uh, we get a chances to work with producers where we thought well this producer is more of a rock guy so it wouldn't really make sense to do a worship record with him so those kind of things happened I think there's a good balance of of kind of a new sound and the classic third day sound and and I believe it's uh, you know I'm not one of those people that ever feels like when you have a new record that you're going to say it's your best record because yeah. as I said earlier songs come in seasons yeah. and music uh, comes in seasons so you just never know uh, what may be what you feel like is your worst album may be somebody else's favorite and so I never say that albums are our best because you just don't know however all that being said this is our best album <laughs> we've ever made <laughs> I'm going to read some of these amazing names. Michael Tate, Michael W. Smith, Natalie Grant, David Crowder, all sons and daughters. I mean, yeah. there's some, did you just like call them up, you know, yeah. have them on speed dial, just say, hey, yeah, basically, <laughs> I need you on my basically album. Basically, <laughs> that's how we did it. Um, we have, you know, we've been fortunate enough to make some really great friends the past 20 years of being yeah. a band and, and people that we look up to. I mean, I still listen to, listen to Christian music. I love it. I love um, how it encourages me in my faith. I love being part of Christian music. And so when you have a chance to work with these great artists, um, people that we look up to, people that we listen to still, uh, look at Michael W. Smith, for example. I mean, he's been a great encouragement to us for many, many years. And whenever we have a chance to tour with him or do a show with him or write with him or whatever, we take it. And so uh, we were so glad that he was part of the album. Now, when you're singing these songs, is there um, a story or a memory that comes to you? I know that I've asked um, artists before, is there a favorite song on the album? And everybody says, it's like choosing a child, you yeah, can't choose one. Yeah, yeah. But is there like one memory or thought that comes to your mind, especially when you're performing it, mm. um, that kind of just makes you, it makes it resonate why you're up there and why you're singing yeah. what you're singing? Well, I, I read the other day, uh, and I can't remember who wrote this, I need to look it up, but I read the other day, that someone said that worship music is basically prayer. Mm. And so when we're doing music, when we're doing an album, or when we're doing an hour and a half, hour 45 to two hour concert of worship music, we're praying for that amount of time. And so it's, yeah. it's us calling out to God, it's us giving God the praise that he deserves. And so um, there's so many great moments on the record that I feel like I could tell you that I could pick from. One that specifically though, there's a song called Victorious, mm -hmm. and I'll, with, I'm not singing it. I don't know if I can actually tell you the lyrics by just trying to remember them, but uh, the, it starts out saying, in all the heavens there is one who conquered death alone and brought our freedom. And there's something about that truth to just think about in, in all the religions in the world and all the ideas and all the faiths, um, we as 
believers, we, as Christians, we feel like there's one. There's one way to heaven. There's one way for salvation. And, and to, to think about that, it's an amazing thought. It's an amazing um, faith. And it's an amazing love that's been given to us. And we get to share that with, with people every night when we sing that song. It's called Victorious. Hmm. I heard, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that there is a, a correlation throughout the album with Moses' story and Jesus' story. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So much of the album... Um, and it's called Lead Us Back. It's, mm -hmm. it's uh, so much of the album is about the Exodus. Mm -hmm. I've been studying uh, the Exodus in the past couple of years and really um, loving so much that correlation, that parallel between Moses and Jesus. How Moses was called by God to lead uh, the children of Israel back home, mm -hmm. back to where they belong, back to uh, the place that God had for them because they had been in slavery and been in sin and been in a place that was not their home. And so, and Jesus does the same thing for us, taking us away from sin, away from death, away from this place of, of really of slavery, of place that we don't belong, into a place of freedom, into our home. Mm -hmm. And so I, I love the parallels in those stories and, and most of the songs on the album are about that. Yeah. What advice would you give young bands. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk about Michael W. Smith being an encourager right, to you. Right. How do you encourage uh, new bands yeah. coming up? Well, I tell, I'll tell new artists all the time, uh, it doesn't sound encouraging, but, but eventually, hopefully, they'll, they'll find the encouragement in it is that you're never going to figure it out. You're never going to get to a place. We've been doing this for 22 years, and we're still asking the same questions. How can we get better? How can we reach more people? Mm -hmm. You know, how do we grow in our faith, and how do we grow as musicians, as writers? So you're never going to figure it out. You keep, you know, if you have the right uh, heart and, and mind space, you're going to keep trying to be better. Mm -hmm. And so don't be discouraged that you're asking those same questions year after year. And the other thing I tell people all the time is just pray a lot and play a lot. Every chance you get, pray together, especially if it's a band. You pray together if you're a solo artist. You pray with other people about what you're doing. And then you play as much as you can. You don't worry about, oh, I'm not playing in front of thousands of people tonight. You go, how many people are here? How many people do I get to minister to and try to encourage? And it could be 15. I mean, we did that so often when we started out. We would play for anybody that would listen because you get the practice in. You get, you get to practice not only your, your music, but you get to practice being able to share with people on stage and, and minister to people after the show. So it's a... Uh, just do everything that you can. Play as much as possible. Don't wait for, don't worry so much about being at place B that you miss out on what God has for you in place A. Come on.